In this part two video, we're going to walk through the code and explain uh, mostly how it integrates with compact sections. Uh, you, in any spreadsheet, in order to work with a Visual Basic, you're going to have to have this developer tab turned on. And you can find that by, if it's not there, by going to the options and then customize the ribbon and make sure that that's checked. And if you go to the developer tab, you can get to the Visual Basic by clicking here, or you can go to the design mode, click on the button and say, show me the code that's associated with that button. So let's see, view code. <clears throat> so notice that we have code, for, uh, the, uh, there's, the code is broken down for sheet one, sheet two, Sheet 3 which really doesn't have anything. And then Module 2, which contains routines that are common to both Sheet 1 and Sheet 2. So you'll notice that uh, you can have subroutines with the same name under different sheets. And you don't have to worry about name collisions. Up at the top here is our globals. They can be accessed through, through every subroutine. And we're, we're looking at sheet one, because that's where we clicked on. So here we are. And the build and analyze is fired when this button is clicked. And the first thing it does is it goes through each of the active uh, sheet Olay objects and all the pull downs there are Olay objects and the compact section display it's here is also one and so we look through these objects and we look for a prog ID the program ID of structures office compact sections document when we hit that then we activate it and you see the hash marks go around and then uh, we set this X section to this variable, obj.object. You notice up here, X section is dimension as a compact sections document. And I should mention that in order to make use of compact sections, and you're going to have to make sure that the references are turned on. And you'll see here that you have to have this library checked for it to recognize data types like that. First thing it does is clear, then it looks to see if there's a SQL uh, database created for Structures Office. If not, it creates one. And this is a step that's not absolutely necessary, uh, but I'm trying to expose you to different things in, in compact sections. So if it isn't defined, we create it, and then we connect the Structures Office document to that SQL database. And then there's just some routines here. The first one gets the inputs from the spreadsheet. The next one defines materials from the materials tab. Then the next section is build the, uh, build the section. And you notice we're passing in this section object, uh, compact sections document into each one of these very uh, subroutines. And so uh, let's go down and take a closer look at build sections. So notice I can just right click on it and say go to definition and here's the code so this is how we get the display of the section inside the spreadsheet we've got some dimensions up here for X and Y on the uh, of the locate uh, components in the section and we're using these global variables edge distance stirrup diameter upper bar radius that we got from the inputs. And so we'll walk down through here and uh, you'll see uh, well what the way it's built up is it's built up in subsections. 
So the first thing we do is create a subsection called concrete. And this would just hold the definition for the concrete block. Then we set the current subsection to concrete. And then we add the rectangle from the width and the height that we got up here. And we apply a material that we got uh, down here. And then we set the, con the current section back to the root. And then we go to the stirrups we create. Here we get the, the geometry of that stirrup. We create a subsection called stirrups, set it to the current, uh, create this, the uh, stirrups modeled as form C's, and we mirror it to get the opposite side, apply the material to the left and right, we're applying the steel material, and then set the section back to root. And we do the same thing for the upper bars. We're going through and we're adding discs based on our X and X1, Y1 calculations that we got up here for locating those discs. And we look through for how many uh, bars on top. And we add one and we apply a material. We apply the steel material to it. You notice that we make up a name each time using the, the I value. So it would be upper bar 1, upper bar 2. Set the section back to uh, the subsection. And we do the lower bars, which is the same procedure based on the X3, Y3, X4, Y4 values. Looping through and applying uh, material. If there's a second row, if the number of rows equals two, then we create this second row of bars in this code here. Then we set the subsection back to root, and then finally we uh, call push the subsection to back concrete. So we don't want the concrete block covering up everything else, so when we do that, the concrete goes to the back and we see the bars and the stirrups. The Analyze section is where we do all of the calculations for the, uh, uh, the ACI 318.08. And so we're using the worksheet RC Beam. That's the name of the sheet. And we get the material. We're, we're fetching from the database when we call this. We're getting the, uh, from the, the CBO's uh, combination box. And CBO concrete, that would be this guy. Whatever that value is goes into this fetch material and it returns a concrete object, which is a material, a compact section's material. And then we get the values for FCY, longitudinal direction, and epsilon, maximum compressive strain, from the concrete material. We do the same thing for steel. We get Young's modulus and the tension yield, longitudinal direction. Calculate the steel area. That's just a simple subroutine. You can always go down, pop down here. It's in the module. And it's simply the number of bars times the rebar area times the number of rows. And we pass in. Um, the rebar ID and it gives you the total number of uh, the cross-sectional area of the steel. And these are the number of bars on the bottom. And here we're doing the Whitney stress block per 10.2.7.1. Calculate the tension force and the compressive force. Compute the distance to the neutral axis. Compute the strain in the steel for two row case. Steel yield. Compute uh, phi using min strain. So let's go down here. Let's take a look at it. If epsilon min is greater than 0 0.005 per 10.3.4, set phi to 0.9. Otherwise, phi is computed like this. And this is all explained in the videos. I, 
I know I'm rushing through it, but I really can't cover all of that that procedure. None of the calculations are difficult. It's just, you know, there's just a lot of them. And so we'll go on down through here, minimum steel area for given moment. Pass in our, our compressive yield width. Uh, let's go to it. So we're down, you see that this code's in the module because it's used in several different sheets. And this is uh, some of the same, uh, this is just the this, this same code that you'd see in, the, in those variables, in those videos again. So it goes on down and uh, uh, computes the moment capacity. All this code is here and you'll have to study it to understand it. So let's uh, let's set a couple of breakpoints and just walk through and um, I can see it working here. So let's go to the build and analyze and we'll walk through all that quickly again. I'm going to do file close and return. Okay I'm working on the rectangular beam here. The T-beam is very similar. I want to get out of design mode and then I click on this and notice it hit this code. So now I'm looking for my compact section object of all the different objects in here. Which one is this? So now when I click on build and analyze, I'm in here looking for a prog ID equal to that. Click continue and it found it. See this prog ID matches this. And we activate it. You see the crosshatch? This means that now the VB, basically what you're looking at is compact sections running. It's running outside of Excel, but it's using a window inside Excel to display. Clear the contents. And now we're going to connect the structures office database, SQL database, to my cross-section or compact section document. Getting the inputs, pretty simple. Here we are in get inputs. And we walk down through and we're grabbing from the cell row 5, column 2. Row 5, column 2 is the width. And then you see the width is 12. Walk on down, grabs all the Lower bar radius, stirrup diameter, number of rows in the bottom, stirrup spacing, 17.2 is stirrup spacing. That's this guy. And you see that these all match. It's a very nice IDE. Okay, now we're going to get the materials. And here we're using the material database, which is not necessary, but uh, it's good to know. Okay, now we've dimensioned steel as a material, and, it's all, and concrete up here was dimensioned as a material. This dimension statement should be up here, but it doesn't break anything. And then we're defining the values, and we're defining a color for it. So you can set any color for that material that you want. Uh, we're setting the FCY. Uh, the maximum compressive strain. And then here we're committing this concrete material to the database. And now it's in there. And the same down here. Commit. Now we'll walk through the build and analyze. We're getting the, uh, the X and Y values for the geometry of the beam that are of interest. And top fiber to steel, distance down from the... And here we're going through and we're creating the subsections. You see that the material it was, is a green... Uh, as I 
when I created that material, I set the color to a, a green. It was heavy on the, the green value. I think it was 0.8. So I created the subsection, and now I'm going to, okay, here's the web length. Now you see that it's blank because we're working in the current section is stirrups. And I mirrored it with this statement here. Applying the materials to the left and right, and then we set it back. And we'll you'll see what happens when we uncover that. And now we go through and we're defining our upper bar subsection. So you'll see that X, what these values are here for locating your, your rods on the top of the beam. And so now we got down here and you'll notice that after we did our bottom row, uh, we didn't have two, so we only had one row there. And then we pushed the concrete block, the subsection called concrete, to the back so that the rods and stirrups would show. And now we go through the, an the analysis and notice how we're passing in that cross-section document object. And you'll see that that is dimensioned here. And we go through, we get our, we get the concrete material from the database and the steel and then we pull out values from it. At the steel area, tensile force, and we compute the size of the Whitney stress block. V, 22, so that's this value. And so if we have this moment, and we've computed our phi and width and FC values, we'll get the required steel. And then we check to see if the steel, if the steel area, 1.32, is greater than the required of, of 0.4, and it certainly is. So we put the message passed in here. down through so here down at the bottom I've got my moment capacity and I want it in kip feet and the shear capacity I want in kips so then it goes into cell 30 and 31 so you'll have to study this and uh, I, I can't cover everything But I hope that's uh, enough to get you going. If you have any questions, just get in contact us at uh, support at structuresoffice.com, uh, any place you get stuck. And thank you for listening.